Hi everyone and welcome. I want to thank you very, very much for purchasing this tin kit and joining me uh, to learn how to do some of the fun um, things that uh, we can do with these tins. I uh, also added a lot of little extra goodies in your boxes. Um, I hope that you can use and enjoy. Um, also want to give you a really quick preview of a kit that I have coming up. I'm going to be doing more kits. Uh, they won't all be tin kits. They're going to be some different project kits. Uh, but this next one is a tin kit. So I wanted to do, let you um, preview it first. Uh, this one is called The Little Prince. It's got a, a nice little see-through front on it. And um, what I'm going to do differently with this kit is the add-on kit will be your ink and your um, embossing art and the embossing glue. That will be separate so that you that already have that will not have to purchase all that again um, in order to do this tin here. What you're going to get is everything you see here including that cute little scooter little metal scooter you see inside there, the little metal fence. You're going to uh, get obviously your tin. Um, you're going to get a piece of foil that's already been embossed and ready to set in here. You're going to get your little metal piece up here and a rose. Um, you're going to get those little tiny dice. Can you see those down in there? You're going to get a tile and um, a piece of paper to use um, to make this um, little faux license plate with. You're going to get a piece of chipboard uh, gear and I'm going to show you in the video how I created this crown and make your um, chipboard pieces look like metal. Um, this is actually just done with a stamp, believe it or not, and a piece of paper. And that's something you're going to um, get to see in the video that goes along with this one. You will get to see how to um, make things like that uh, with that video. So um, again, you're going to get all of this in a little kit. It'll all fit down in the tin. I'm not adding a lot of extra foils and extra papers with it so that I can keep the cost down. This is going to sell for $12.50 um, and because of of being able to put everything down in there. I'm looking at the shipping hopefully somewhere around two or three dollars uh, US, a little bit more, not much more hopefully for international. These are going to be a limited amount of kits available for this one. So go into my Art Fire store uh, in just a short while and um, grab them up before they're gone. And, uh, but I will, like I said, have the add-ons if someone wanted to purchase this piece and then all the other pieces to go with it. Alrighty, I am going to be trying to go through this video kind of fast because um, I want to try to keep this under 30 minutes for you. So at times you're going to need to follow along. I'm going to stop and then tell you, you know, you might want to pause and then you will finish up a um, something that I had just shown you like I'll show you how to do the front and then you'll go ahead and finish doing the back on your own just to save some time. I also have some uh, little things at the end of this video uh, some suggestions for um, using some of the, uh, the items I sent and some things that you can make on your own to add into your tin. So we're going to start with the messy part first and hopefully you've gathered up everything you need uh, to put together your tin. And so uh, I want you to go ahead right now. We're going to do all the inking right away because it takes a little while to dry. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you that part. So go ahead and grab your gloves and you're going to grab one of your, or a couple, your two foils that you have in your kit that are already embossed. You want to grab those and you want to grab any of the other metal pieces that you have and um, get those ready. My gloves have already been well used as you can see. I'm going to have my sponge brush at hand so that I can um, sponge out some of the ink. Now with this ink you're going to find out that um, you can't 
you can work with the ink when it's wet. You want to, and it dries very quickly. You want to keep putting layers of ink on very fast, working with it, and then it's going to dry on you. Um, if you put more ink on, like a few minutes after it's just starting to dry, it's going to make it spread out and it's not going to have a, um, the effect that you want. So you want to make sure that you want to go ahead and um, let it completely dry before you do any touch-ups. Okay, so in your tin, before I forget, you're going to see a little uh, piece of white sticky tape in there. Go ahead and pull that off. The ink will not stick to that, so you want to make sure you want to pull that off. I think they put that in to protect the hinges. Also, you want to protect your table. So I'm going to put this underneath here. Um, a couple things of paper towels will help absorb your um, ink up. So we go ahead and you've taken that off. I went ahead and this is what you need to do and if you need to pause, if you're going to be following along, you might need to pause to do this. Um, on the back side, I want you to lay your tin down. I want you to use your pencil and draw around it. Uh, you're going to have to pull out your other um, piece that is already embossed and do the same thing. So you're doing a front and a back and you want to draw that out first. This just makes it a little bit easier to cut it out and get it onto your tin. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this out now. And um, one of the things I forgot to mention, around the edge of the uh, tin, the foil, excuse me, um, there is not a pattern there. The embossing folder doesn't go out far enough to make a pattern over the whole piece. So make sure you set your little um, piece of foil, set your tin in on your foil a little bit so that you have pattern all the way around. And remember, save this last little piece. You want to save the pieces that you've got left over that are, that are already embossed with the gears because I'm going to show you some other fun stuff to do with that. So as you're going along, and we're doing all the inking, and I tell you to go ahead and finish inking on your own, ink this too, just like we're going to show you how to do the tin, because there's some fun things to do with that piece that's left over. Okay, this is an adhesive back, and I'm going to take my gloves back off because I cannot peel that. So you've got a sticky back on here. So you want to peel that off, and you want to, I think this was the front of my tin that I measured, and then you want to stick this down. You're pretty much going to have to get it right where you want it. There is going to be a little bit over the edge, and that's okay, because that's what that popsicle stick in there is for. So you're going to go ahead and get this pressed down. Here, rub it with your fingers. Find that little popsicle stick I included in your kit. This is what I use a lot of times to burnish with. And that just means to kind of uh, smooth it out. It's going to make it look like it's all part of the tin. It's not going to make it look like you actually added something. It's going to look like it actually is all part of it. You want to go around the whole edge and do that. Just kind of give it a little smoothing and feel around there to see if you've got it all flat. There you go. It's on there nice. Now I got to put my gloves back on. Um, I'm going to have you open your inks here in a moment and I want you to open them all at once. They will dry out if um, you leave it open too long but for all that we're going to do, it'll be fine to leave them open long enough to get this all done up. Okay, so um, I go ahead and open this up. Now, you've done, you've put your foil on both sides. I'm only going to do the one side for right now. So I need you to do both before you begin with your ink. So if you need to pause, this is a good time to do that. Get your other one put on because it, they work out much better uh, if they've been put on the tin before uh, you begin. Learn that through trial and error. Okay, so we're going to open up all our inks. I like the effect of all three colors. Um, they're just in different tones of brown, so you want to go ahead and do that. 
Alrighty. And so you've got your protective surface, you've got your hands. Now, as you put this on, you're going to squeeze slightly, but not too much because it will actually just run out as you are doing this. And I want you to cover little square areas completely. Because like I said, once it starts drying, you can't go back over it. And you want to try to fill in all these. So this is this you just have to do this pretty quickly. You want to get a bunch of it on there, let it drip and run. It's already starting to dry. But we want to fill in all these little cracks in here. Excuse my hands, I've got to work fast because I do not want this to dry on me before I get there. So take your sponge brush at this time and kind of pat, kind of pat it into the tin. Make sure you get any bare spots really quickly before they dry and sop up any little really extra that you have in places on there. Alrighty, and I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more right in there in the center. Kind of tip it, roll it around, and then leave it alone. Try not to bother it too much after that point. I'll uh, show you on the domino what it does if you go back and forth over it too many times. So I've got a few drips there. I'm going to let it kind of run down. So this needs to be done here. You need to do it on here. And when you're doing the sides, run your um, ink down the sides. Dab it with your brush really quickly. Make sure you get the rim. Let that dry a little bit. Go to the next spot. Tap that in. I kind of just stick with one color when it comes to the outside edge. Now if it's starting to pull off from where you're touching it with your glove, um, go ahead and start over in another area. We're going to make sure that we also do the back of the tin. And you'll see as you're, you're sponging, you're just tapping it lightly. You're just going to let, let the um, ink kind of spread like it wants to there at that point and it will stick to um, the paper towel so you really don't want to let this um, sit down on the paper towel just yet and so you're going to do that on the front and the back and you're going to set it aside to dry before we do the inside so we're going to set that aside and if you need to pause to finish yours go ahead I'm going to set this over here let this dry Alrighty, you want to grab your uh, key. Um, okay, I just realized I forgot to to take my key out. I have some keys that are already finished. Is the reason I forgot to do this. So let me get your key out there. Now um, yours are probably hooked together too, and you just need to take a pair of pliers. This is something you can do ahead of time too. And um, just bend that to the side and pull the keys off. I think they're easier to work with individually like that. Okay, so we're doing the same thing with this. We're going to put um, some ink on. We're going to pat it around, get it down in the grooves. Let me get a lighter color on this side over here. I'm going to show you some fun things you can do with your keys here in just a moment. So you want to pat that, set that aside, let it dry. Okay, I, um, you can see here that I have one finished on both sides that is dry. And um, I found some fun uses for them, uh, some other little things you can do with them. You can embellish these keys. I've got right here a little piece of filigree and a little charm hanging off there. This one I actually um, put some little, um, some UT is down the side of it also, but I've added some little uh, pearls, flat back pearls, a little piece of filigree that I cut, and there's a little uh, rose charm, and then I've added um, a piece of chain, because I'm going to add this into another tin at some time. 
So you can do that with it. The dominoes that we have in the kit, you're going to get your little tiny domino out now and you're going to do the same thing you did with the key and the other thing you're going to go ahead and get that domino covered. And I just go ahead and do the sides and the back and I'm going to let that dry. You can add just a little bit more and watch some of the fun things that it does with it. Let me get the camera down here. And tap it just a little bit. You just get this really neat marbling effect. Play around with it. See if you like what it does. And set that aside and let it dry. Um, there are some large ones in there. This one's done up already. Um, these don't really fit in the tin. I just included them in there because I wanted to show you some other fun things to do with them. Um, you can decorate these up. That little piece of tin that I was saying that we were going to um, also ink up. I've taken that and see here's the back of the domino. I've taken that and cut it to fit, peel it, and placed it on my domino. And then I've added just some fun charms on there. This can set like in a bigger uh, figuration box. You can do all kinds of, of things with this. You can add a deal on here and this could be a pendant. Um, this is just chipboard and your UT. And so um, there, that's just another idea to do with the um, dominoes. Uh, one of the other things that you can do with the little tiny one, and I'm just going to show you this towards the end, is um, right here I've used it as a little backing plate for that little uh, Eiffel Tower picture there. So you are going to take uh, your frame, if you've got a frame you want to do, you're going to take your keys, your domino, you're going to take this little glass vial, if you want to use it, and I just run ink down one side of it, let it drip down, give it a few seconds to dry, and just set that aside. I just gives it a nice little vintage look. So at this point, you want to take um, anything that you've got in your kit, your filigree, anything that is metal, um, or the porcelain or glass, and you want to make sure that you uh, do the method I just showed you um, on all of those pieces. Now this is where um, you can pause so that you can get those pieces done and drying. And I'm going to move on to showing you how to do the uh, UT. That is your metal art. Oops. That is your melt art ultra thick embossing enamel, also known as UT. Alrighty, so let me pull this back up here. I'm going to put my ink caps back on for a moment here because I'm not inking at the... I don't want that to dry out. So the next step after you've given it a good 15-20 minutes for all the ink things to dry and if you can touch them with your hand and it doesn't pull back off then you are ready to do this next process. Um, I recommend that you um, go ahead and do the rim on the inside. Now you don't have to do the back, this is just some that, that seeped out there. But you want to do the rims all the way around and you want to make sure that you get the other part because you're not really going to cover these areas with paper, you're just going to cover the back with your paper and elements. So you don't want that uh, tin to show. So go ahead and make sure you do the, your uh, your edges, and it really works real well if you just dab it with a good saturated brush, and then let that dry. So okay, um, now it's time to get your heat gun out and your embossing. There it is. Grab the one that was full. Okay, so this is um, an embossing uh, sticky stuff. And what you're going to do is, I'm just going to go ahead and close it for this one. I just tap in a couple places here and there on it, like right in, you know, just about uh, kind of to the corners, any little spots that maybe the um, ink didn't stick are good. 
and I get out my little container paper plate or a little container of some kind to make sure that you um, have something to dump the extra UT off in and um, actually it works better if you just sprinkle pinch and sprinkle it and just sprinkle it and let it get on all those areas that you just put a little bit of the embossing sticky stuff on I'm sure that's the technical name right the sticky stuff <laughs> Okay, so can you see that I just have it randomly just placed on there? Okay, this is an important step you need to remember. Get this back in your jar and close the lid of your jar. You will not like having this stuff blow and spread all over your entire room when you turn on your heat gun because you forgot to close it up. Believe me, you will appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the heat gun and show you how this melts down. This is going to be a little loud, but I'm going to show you that you need to leave it on and, and move it back and forth until you see it melt um, completely down. There you go. Isn't that cool? I love the way that looks. If you have the different colors of the um, UT, um, like if you have the bronze, the platinum, or any of the other colors, um, mixing those all in there also gives it a really wonderful effect. This is very hot right now. You do not want to touch this. You want to let this cool. You want to grab maybe your key or something else. I'm just going to pop it over that way. And um, do the same thing down the side of your key. Keep trying to grab the one that's already closed. Sorry about that. Okay, so I just did this down one side of my key. And I'm going to sprinkle some more on there. Just down that side and melt it. Just like I did the top of the box. Hi everyone, we're back. Uh, so this will be a little longer than 30 minutes, I'm afraid. Okay, so um, I have done a, a couple little um, inserts so that you could get an idea of some of the things that you can do with the um, pieces that you got in your kit. Uh, if you did not get a frame with yours, um, or don't have a frame to go with it, you can take uh, your um, picture and just ink it. I always ink and distress the edges of my papers. I think they look a little more vintage that way. So you'll want to cut your different layers of paper and you want to do that also. Um, as you can see here, I have added a key. This is a little um, chipboard heart that have added the UT, two different colors of UT on it, and a little uh, gem in the middle of it with some little um, little trinkets there. A little bit of lace, some of the flowers. Um, on this side here, I've got that vial and I've just added some beads inside it. Here's a little strip that goes all the way down um, of that extra piece 
um, that I was talking to you about adding to your domino or you can add it back in the back of your tin. Um, this is that milk cap that is in there. Um, if you don't like the front of it, flip it over like I've done here, ink the edges and I've actually stamped on it. Uh, it makes a nice little background piece as well. Um, something else you could do, um, make on your own, just to add a little something in there. This is a little book. A uh, little faux book that I have made um, just out of some of that same paper that had a little bit of the writing on it. Um, it's got a little piece of chipboard at the back and then several little layers that I've just kind of glued up and I've laid a little piece of ribbon down the middle like a bookmark. So that's something you could add in there also. It doesn't have to be something you have found or bought. Um, I'm going to pull this out because I just lay, I just made these and laid them in there so that I could show you some of the things that you could do with your own little kit. Um, if you've got a frame, you can put, uh, you can also use the inks on your frame and then put your frame in here. This is that little tiny domino and I had this cute little uh, picture of Paris so I put that in there. Here's some of the flowers. There's just a little bit of lace in there. On the other side I took that um, piece of metal filigree that we had and um, I have layered it back here with some papers, some a little bit of the ribbon uh, lace um, here's that little vial again with some little beads in it. Uh, I've just laid that key right down in here, added another flower. Uh, this is just out of a paper collection um, that uh, made a nice little tag in there. So there you go. You could actually um, make something, you know, pretty much with the kind of items that you have in your uh, kit itself. Um, some of you have these. This one I haven't got the words in yet, but I'm thinking it would look really, really cool also mounted on the front of the tin. Um, I would just take the brads, cut off the back parts of the brad, and um, put them through there, and then I would just glue this directly down on here. You wouldn't have to, to put clear through the tin. You could do it just like that. Um, I just think that would look kind of nice too, as well as you could actually um, distress up a piece of paper uh, and take an, and place this on here. Maybe some of your lace down here. Uh, maybe go ahead and use make make your own little book and set down in here, or lay your key or something. Um, there's all kinds of, of of fun things that you could you could do. You could have your your key. I don't know, attach, attached over here on this other side over here. Um, but so you could you could uh, add your own little goodies inside there as well, obviously. But this, I just thought, would give you some ideas of some ways that you could decorate your own tins. Now, um, I would greatly appreciate it if you went ahead and took some um, photos and shared them on Facebook. I would love to see them. Please link it back to my uh, Facebook page if you do that so that I can see it and we can share it with everyone else out there. Um, especially if you enjoyed the video and you've um, got some good information out of it. Um, for those who like to do YouTube videos, um, I would really, really appreciate the same thing if you would leave a, a link um, back to my YouTube channel. Now this video that you're getting with this um, is only seen by those who purchase the kit. So you are the only ones that have the insight on how to um, put together these tins yourself. And that's the way I'm going to do um, the other videos as well. Uh, you purchase a kit, you um, get access to the video, and you can see this video obviously as many times as you would like to, um, but it is part of what you purchase, so that I wanted to let you know that. Um, please get a hold of me if you have any questions because I know I had to go over things pretty fast and um, there's always questions that people have. So feel free to contact me and um, ask what questions that you have if you did not get something 
So I can back up so you can see all this up there. I'm going to do up some of these kits for a little bazaar that I'm doing. So um, that's what I'm going to use these ones for. They won't go to waste, that's for sure. Thank you all once again um, for purchasing my tin kit. Um, it really thrilled me to see so many of you uh, want to do that. Um, and again, check in my Art Fire store for more kits coming up. I'm working on a lot more. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.